Hi everyone and welcome to the sew along for the peplum top. So this top is designed to be made in a woven fabric. Most of the seam allowances we're using today are one centimeter, which is three eighths of an inch, but I'm using six mil, quarter of an inch for bag outs and facings, but we'll talk about that as we go through. The other thing you'll need to know about this pattern is we're using a shirred panel in the back um, so that allows for the fit so we don't have to have a zip or anything like that or a button in the back and we'll talk you through that as you go so you're going to need some shearing thread for your bobbin. Um, make sure your tensions are balanced before you start we want 20 stitches per 5 centimeters so that's 20 stitches per 2 inches and when you're ready we'll just jump straight in and get started. So the first thing we're going to jump in and do is the shirred centre back panel which allows for our fit. So this is the piece you're looking for here and on the piece you'll see a double notch and that double notch shows us the centre back. We want to use our overlocker and secure the long edge that does not have the double notch in it. So all we want to do is just secure the edge. Now because we're dealing with a woven fabric you really only need three threads in your overlocker. I'm going to use four because I like the look of it um, but you really only need three. So all we're doing really is to secure the raw edge so now I'd like you to go to your iron and press that under one centimeter, which is three eighths of an inch, and then we'll move to our plain sewing machine. So this is shearing elastic. Um, you put it in your bobbin and we use that to create the elasticity in the back. So this saves needing a zip or a button. Um, some people like to hand wind this onto your bobbin. Um, you can use your machine winder if you want. The only thing I will tell you is you're going to be rewinding it often. Um, and the other thing is generally it only comes in two colours which is white or black so you really need to decide which is correct for your fabric. So let's just load this up. Now shearing, you're either going to love it or hate it. Um, you need to create straight rows. It really doesn't matter whether the rows um, are a centimetre three-eighths of an inch apart or whether you have them one and a half centimeters um, it's really up to you the main thing is we need to make sure the rows are even and at the end you want to leave maybe three quarters of an inch two centimeters from the raw edge it'll just make it easy um, to attach the back panel and it'll look nicer as well so the other thing I can tell you about shearing is make sure when you start and finish that you back tack and you back tack more than three stitches. Now we have a one centimeter, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So you can go a long way from the edge and back tack to secure, but if you don't secure that shearing, you will run into problems. All right, so let's start. The first row of shearing, it's um, a good idea not to put too close to the fold or too close to the one centimeter three eighths of an inch line. So I try and put it maybe quarter of an inch, five mil or so from the top edge. I'm just going to follow my presser foot and we'll go through this slowly. So I'm starting just in from the edge of my fabric and normally I'd just back tack, go forward three, back three. I'm going to do a little bit more than that just to make extra, um, make sure that's extra secured. At the end of each row, it's um, often a good idea to pull some of the tail out from your bobbin as well because when we cut the thread off, often it can pull back in, but we'll just run through that. So the first row of shearing we want around about 5mm, quarter of an inch from the edge. Now the shearing will work differently depending on the type of fabric you're using. This is a very firm woven, so this won't look like it's gathering much but anything lighter will. So take that through to the edge, take a good back tack, and when you cut it off, you just want to make sure it's properly secured. Now let's have a look at our bobbin thread. This has pulled right back in, so all I'm going to do is pull a little bit more of a tail out just to make sure it will secure 
as we go. So I'm going to sew just over one centimetre gaps now and I'm going to use um, the guides on my foot and all we need to do is really make sure everything is um, parallel. So I've actually gone and removed the stitching I just did and readjusted my tensions. Um, I'm not going to redo the video for those two rows. Um, what I want is a nice tight line of shearing like this. So that's the ratio you want. Um, I don't know quite why it didn't work that way, but I've what I did was um, I hand wound the bobbin really tight and I fiddled with the tensions until I got a better gather on uh, my fabric. So um, make sure when you start a new row you pull enough thread through that it will catch properly and then just keep stitching. And it really doesn't matter as I said um, how far apart you do do the rows as long as they are consistent. Okay, so um, I've done my rows of stitching, um, that should be fine. I want to leave about two centimeters, three eighths of an inch towards the bottom. And um, so that shirt piece is finished. So just pop that aside somewhere safe and we'll deal with it later. So on another note, what we want is a gathering ratio of about two to one. So whatever size you start with, you want around about half finished. So here is our side back pieces. We have a pair. We cut one out this way and one out this way. And on one side there's two notches. Now those two notches are the sides that attach to either side of the shirt panel we just did. So if you keep the shirt notch or the, the notches on this side, this is the top and this is the bottom. And you can see it angles out slightly at the bottom. We want to run some overlocking along this top edge to secure it. So what we're going to do I'm just going to do it like this so I make sure I do both pieces at once and I'm overlooking on the right side. So I've overlocked the top edge. Now before you do anything else make sure you take out your shearing bobbin and replace it, oops, replace it with the bobbin thread that matches your fabric and then go ahead and readjust your tensions because you may have fiddled with them to get the shearing ratio right. Um, often if you want the bobbin um, to, to get more tension in like I did I, I change the upper thread so um, as a rule of thumb if you want something to change with the bobbin you change the upper thread if you want ch something to change with the upper thread you change the bobbin tensions generally most of the time when you're fiddling with tensions you only need your upper tension adjustment and the other thing when you are um, playing with woven fabrics and getting the tensions right you want to make sure there's 20 stitches per five centimeters so 20 stitches 
for two inches it just looks pretty and the fabric sits better and it's easier to iron it's just an industry standard for um, most wovens all right so here are our two pieces <clears throat> okay so place those side back pieces um, right side up here are the notches I'll put the notches in the middle and we've got that overlocked edge at the top and as you can tell they angle out so this is the side here that attaches to the shirring so place your shearing panel right side down so that our notches match there. So that's the correct way. We're going to be sewing a hem in afterwards and the hem's at one centimetre. Um, what I wanted to do was to sandwich this so it all looks quite nice and tidy before I put that hem in. So what I'm going to do is making sure the notches match and that side seam match and this folded edge here is one centimetre down from the top just going to create a sandwich like that, fold it over and then I'm going to sew down the side at one centimetre now be careful when you're doing this because we want to hide all that um, back tacked ends of the shirring so go up and down and make sure it's all nice and tidy and straight. Oh, and I've got thread. I'll take that out. So we want to end up hiding the beginnings and ends there. So that's the effect we want. And as you can tell, we're going to be putting a hem in here in just a second. So once you've done that side, come to the other side, right side up right side down so we have right sides together place this a centimetre from the top I'm going to turn it around this way it'll be easier to sew for me from the bottom so match the bottom edge one centimetre here back tack and sew it up going to create that sandwich at the top edge so just wrap that around right. Right, so we're going to go to our overlocker now and tidy that edge up before we go any further so here we are at the overlocker I'm just going to use it to um, tidy up that edge so on this side and then um, yeah. And that'll just give you a really pretty finish. Okay, so back to our plain machine. So just fold that sandwiched area at the top back. And what that has done is create this nice little transition area for us at the top. And all we're going to do now is sew a one centimetre hem on the tops of each of these sides. So you can go and press that into place if you like. I'm going to finger press it which basically means just using the heat of my fingers to hold that in place. Remember to back and tack and start exactly on that join position there. And we'll do the same on the other side. So a one centimetre hem. Back tack. Give that a press at each side with your iron and we can move on. Right, so now we're going to work on our straps. We have two straps that are exactly the same. Um, we want to place them um, right sides together lengthways. And then we're going to sew this as a bag out, which is a quarter of an inch, six mil seam allowance. Or for most people it's foot width 
So all I'm going to do is make sure we back tack like so and we run that up the side. Now we need to make sure we have right sides together. Do the same thing on the other side. And then we need to turn these through. So you can either use a turning tool or if you prefer you can use a um, safety pin. So when you've turned those both through, go to the iron and give it a press. And when you press them, make sure that you push that seam all the way to the side. And make sure that seam's right on the edge. Right, so come to your overlocker. And on the flat end, so you've got two ends. One has a notch on it and one's flat. Put some overlocking on that raw edge to secure the end that's flat for both of them. Okay, so pop those away somewhere safe and we'll move on. Right, so now we're going to sew the lower back to the upper back piece we created here. So the lower back peplum's got a curve in it, the shorter curve is the top, and if we open it up we will see there's a notch at the side and then there's a double notch at the centre. So let's put this right side together to our shirring piece. When we sew this, we're going to be sewing it from the side seam and that notch there will match the seam we created here where the shirring piece joins the side back. The seam we're sewing is one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch and remember to back tack when you begin. Now generally when we come to a seam at the back, the seam should face towards the centre back but because we created this little setback um, we're pushing that seam towards the side seam so it all sits nicely and we'll iron this into place when we're finished so make sure that notch matches the seam there and now we're going to be opening our shearing up and make sure that the notch in the center of our shearing here matches the notch the center back of our peplum all you need to do is just open this fabric up as you sew and the notches will sit on top of each other. And what we're doing is creating a bit of a gather effect for the lower back. Same thing when we come to the notch on the other side, make sure that seam sits in the same direction and that the seam sits on top of the notch and then continue across to the other side seam. So now we're going to go to our overlocker and just overlock tidy that lower edge. So all I'm doing here is overlocking right on the raw edge just to trim off any stray threads and to trim off um, any fraying. So I don't normally like pressing shearing, but what I'm going to do is go to my iron and just press that at the sides, um, just to hold that in the right direction. So now let's work on the lower front. Now the lower front has um, pleats in it, just small tucks really, um, for design effect and to give the volume to the peplum. Now generally when we have pleats, the pleats face towards the side seam. But for this top, I like the look of them facing towards the centre. I just thought it gave a bit more body to the garment. Um, I've designed it for the pleats to face towards the centre, but if you want to change that, just feel free. 
So let's start and create the pleats. We're going to assemble them. So place your fabric right side up and starting on this edge as you come along you will see a notch. So we're going to pick up this notch, fold it and put it directly on top of the next notch. And when we do that we want this curve to match. So if you imagine um, that going in a lovely line towards the hemline. So when we have the two notches on top of each other, we're just going to run a tacking stitch. It's just a small stitch without a back tack, foot width, six mil, quarter inch from the raw edge. So that's within the seam allowance. And if you run it in the same um, cotton color as your main fabric, you won't need to remove that tack. Okay, so we come along, we're going to do that again. We're going to pick up the next pleat there with the notch on the edge. Make a small fold and put it on top of the notch here. And then when you've done that, hold that into place. And you can see that the cup is starting to take shape here. Alright, so we'll move across the front to the opposite side. So now we're going to do everything in reverse. We're going to come to that one here and place it on top of the one closest to the center. Stitch that down. And then the last two notches, we're going to pick up this pleat notch here and place it on top of that one there and stitch it down. Right, so now let's assemble the upper front, which is the cup part. And um, I'm noting at this stage that the knot in the center is what creates the um, coverage for the bust. So, we have two pieces that are pretty much the same. One set is longer than the other. So there's two of the shorter and two of the longer. And we've cut one out that way, one out that way, and then one out that way, one out that way. So we have a pair of each. So making sure you have right sides together, take one of the pairs. Now this curve here is the armhole. So we want to leave this area free at the moment for turning. Um, what we're going to do is start from here and we'll sew around. We're going to need our straps to put our straps in place as we sew. So I'm going to turn mine over just to make it easier. So I'm going to start sewing from the side seam. Now this is patterned because it's a bag out with a six mil quarter of an inch seam allowance. When you get close to this edge, I'd like you to just stop an inch away and we're going to start working on putting our strap in position. So take your strap and you need to come to the end that has a notch in it here. And we're going to place that notch to this notch here. And we want to make sure that the um, side with the seam on it is closest to the side we're sewing. What we're going to do is sandwich this in here and you'll notice there's an angle and there's an angle just to create, um, make the shoulder slope a little bit easier when you're wearing it. Um, you might find if you've done a test garment of this you might need to change this around a bit. So place that strap inside matching those notches and we want to make sure all of those raw edges are together. So come on up and stop six mil quarter of an inch from the edge here with your needle down, lift, turn and pivot. You might find it easier putting the strap in now. Probably is actually easier putting the strap in now. And you want to make sure that that raw edge is butted all the way up against the seam here. And we're going to sew along the top to secure that strap into place, still at that six mil quarter of an inch seam allowance. When we get to the corner here, stop the same distance from the edge with your needle down, 
lift your presser foot, turn and pivot. Put your presser foot down and continue. The same for this edge, stop with your needle down in your work, lift, turn and pivot. And this time we're only going to sew as far as the first notch. And when you get to this position, back tack and then finish and take your thread snips and we want to cut a small snip from this short edge towards the end of our stitching but we don't want to cut through our stitching you want to stop oh maybe a sixteenth of an inch just a millimeter from the stitching and because we're going to be bagging this out you'll want to trim a corner off like so leaving the same distance so a millimeter sixteenths of an inch it'll just allow you a nicer corner so make sure you do that on the sides that we've sewn and then turn that through making sure your corners are all nice and pretty and give that a press with your iron and when you've done that on one side we can move on to the other side Okay, so the shorter one is the left as you wear it and the longer one is the right as you wear it. So now we're going to repeat what we've just done for the longer one. Now on this curve, because I've allowed a 6mm mil, six mil quarter inch bag out, you shouldn't need to um, trim the curve. Sometimes people like to create little triangle cutouts in it. If you sew that with a 6mm quarter inch seam allowance, you shouldn't, shouldn't need to but um, you may find you do need to. Okay, so let's stop like so and we'll pop our strap in. So here's my strap, there's my seam edge and my notch. I'm going to sandwich those in. Butting it right to the edge. Right, so let's sew this front body together. So place the lower front right side up and then take the extension, sorry, the upper front with the longer piece on it and place it right sides together. So let's start at the side seam. We're going to sew a one centimeter seam allowance. And as we go, there are going to be notches that match towards the fold edge of our pleat we created. So start off by back tacking. You do have to just manipulate this fabric around slightly as you go. Just curve it round and stitch nice and gently. So there's our first notch to the top of our pleat. Our second notch coming around the curve to the top. Now you'll notice as we come to the top, I'll just sew a couple more stitches. So here is the edge that we um, snipped through, and that edge there 
needs to match to the notch here. Now the reason for that is because this had a 6mm quarter inch seam allowance, this had a 1cm, 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We just need to make sure the very edge of our bag out is on top of that notch. Okay, so back tack that and that side's done. So when we overlock with our overlocker we'll run through there. Um, I could have actually set that back slightly just to make it easier for our overlocker to run around the corner but that'll be fine. Right so do exactly the same thing in the reverse to our other side. You want this shorter piece we want the extension towards the center. We want to put the join here on the notch here. Back tack. And sew around. Let's go to our overlocker and finish that one off. Now you can overlock this all in one but I'm going to be a bit particular and overlock this centre straight part first just because I think I'll get a nice edge. So all I've done is I've just folded those out of the way and I'm going to stitch a straight line across. And now I'm going to go over the curve we just created before on each side. Right, so now we're going to create the twist. We're going to start with a twist with the longer side, which is the right side when you're wearing it. So on the pattern I've marked a twist point. Now if you looked at this, it's pretty much exactly in a line straight up from where the side joins. So just bear that in mind. Now we're going to twist that point there and it's going to come down and sew to this overlock line here. So how do we do it? Right, so this twist point is going to twist in like that before we stitch it down, but we want to create some pleats. Oh, hang on, my machine's come undone. Right. So from that twist point, just create three even pleats, however you like it. They need to be a finished width here of four centimeters, which is one and nine sixteenths of an inch, because that width there is four centimeters that we're stitching it to. So if you just create some pleats like so, If you need to, you could just run some tack stitches down in a straight line. When you have that in place, just twist it behind like so and bring it down so the line of tack stitches you create is sitting pretty much on top of this overlocking line here. Now we're going to stitch that into place. You need to leave a hole. The hole needs to be big enough for your thumb to get through. That's so we can twist the other side in. So here is our pleats. Turn it to the inside. Place it on top of that overlocking line and stitch on top of that tack stitch line from one side to the other remembering it to back tack so we're stitching directly through the overlocking and through that tack stitch line so I'm only going to stitch maybe halfway along and that's just to make sure I can get my thumb in there like that Now to finish off the other side, what we're going to do is just gather that together and pass it through from the back to the front through the hole we just created.
and then try this on. If you're all happy with it, we can tack stitch this into place. So it is marked on the pattern where to tack stitch it, but from this pleat here, it's up two centimeters, which is three quarters of an inch, which is here. And all we're going to do is just stitch the very center of the edge onto that position there. Now, of course, you can change this depending on um, your size and the adjustments you need to make. But all we're doing is just like a bar tack, so just two or three stitches forwards and back just to secure that in place. Um, and it's exactly on the join line here, so two centimeters up, just right on the edge there. Now you can go ahead and just tidy up anything you might need to. So I haven't quite gone far enough here and um, mine's twisting through. So I'm just going to bring that through and um, stitch it down just on the edge there. So go ahead now and tidy up any um, overlocking on the back of your work that you might need to tidy up. Um, most of it should just hide into the seam there. You could always stitch it up to secure it. Um, try not to cut it off at the very base. The other thing I'll add about this, now this is a bit arbitrary. It's going to depend on your cup size and your shape. So you can certainly adjust how much of these pleats you pull in, push down to suit your bust type and it might take a bit of adjustment to get this area sitting just the way you want it to. Right, so let's sew, sew this together at the side seams. Um, make sure you match the side seam nicely. Um, one centimetre, three eighths of an inch. Back tack that. Make sure your seams match and then sew that all the way to the hemline. Repeat on the other side. Go to your overlocker and overlock tidy that. Repeat for the other side. So before we finish the top edge off, because we're at the overlocker, we may as well just go ahead and overlock our hem to secure it. So there's a one centimetre, three eighths of an inch hem allowed for. I'm just going to overlock the hem on the raw edge. sure these hems, are, um, these seams at the side are facing towards the back. Now go to your iron and press that hem at one centimetre which is three eighths of an inch. So let's finish off the top of the side seam. If you trim that tail back to about an inch, which is just over two centimetres, two and a half centimetres, roll the overlocking to the inside, and then just stitch that seam down. So I'm stitching um, about one eighth of an inch, three mil from the edge. And I'm just going as far as my um, line of stitching, just in a few stitches just to hold that seam towards the back and we'll do the same on the other side in reverse. So trim that back, roll it in and then stitch that down to sort of secure it. Now 
and we can do our hem. So I always like to start my hems um, from a left hand side seam as I'm wearing it, up to you. I'm going to stitch mine um, on the front so I can see what I'm doing. Just remember to back tack and make sure it's nice and even. So take your time. Now you shouldn't have any problems with tunneling with this because the curve is very gentle. If you do have a problem with tunneling, just reduce that hem allowance. control work just tidy up any stray threads and the very last thing we need to do is to secure our straps so um, try this on if you need to um, what we're going to do is sew the straps we have already overlocked them so the strap position is just on the edge of the shirring like so and all you need to do is top stitch them into place make sure you can get through the layers and not stitch the wrong layers together so pop this under and if you want to you can trim back the overlocking to an inch or so but it is designed to sit at so this raw edge here sits at the raw edge there but of course it will depend on your size so make sure that the edge of it sits on, um, so the edge here of the strap sits on the seam line here. And just stitch through that top line of shearing that you created, the very first one, from one side to the other. And back tack to secure, and then you can go back in and tidy up um, these overlocked edges, the tails I mean, at the end. You can just go back and stitch them up underneath there like that if you want to. Do one side and then come across and do the other. So that is it, our little top is finished, um, this looks really good in light linens, it really does need a structured type of woven, um, if you go for anything too soft, um, I didn't have much success with the really lighter wovens, but certainly anything medium weight onwards, so really nice soft buttery linen would be fabulous, anything in a gingham would be amazing as well, just something with um, a good cotton to it. Um, and thanks for joining me. This is um, a cute little 1940s vibe. It looks amazing with collots or palazzo pants, which surprisingly enough, palazzo pants are going to be my next pattern release. Um, thanks for joining me. Enjoy your garments. Love your feedback on my Facebook group and I hope to see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Cheers.